All right, welcome back guys. In this video, we are doing an example problem for column buckling. We basically just wanna figure out what is the critical load and then uh, what is our allowable load based on our factor of safety here. We wanna check it against buckling. In this case, this column can buckle in two directions. We have to check both of those. And we also wanna make sure that it's not going to yield, the material won't yield before it buckles. So looking at this, we have a two dimensional, or sorry, three dimensional column here. Um, and we're talking about this as pinned joints, a pin on each end. So we're, we'll basically treat these as ball and socket joints. So they're able to basically this pin, it's like a pin in 360 degrees. Um, but because this rectangular cross section um, has kind of two distinct uh, ways it can buckle, it can buckle uh, basically in the, the YZ plane. So sort of as we're looking, it's left, it can buckle from left to right or right to left, like that way or it can also buckle in the XZ plane. So basically going kind of into the page that way or kind of out of the page that way. So um, basically what we need to do is we need to first figure out what our effective length is. Now in both, considering both planes it can buckle in, uh, it's, uh, it's considered to be pinned in both of those directions. So our effective length, no matter how we look at it, uh, is going to be just the actual length of the column because it's that pin connection. Now that came from the previous videos where we're talking about different end connections, but in the next videos we'll do different examples. So for now, effective length is equal to the length where we have pin-pin connection on this column. All right, the next thing that we need to do is we are going to be using this expression here that is, um, we're gonna be looking for the, the P grit, the critical load that's going to basically uh, be where the column is going to have the tendency to buckle. So that is equal to that is pi squared EI um, over LE squared. So we need to figure out what the moment of inertia is. And because we have this rectangular cross section, uh, we're gonna have to take, uh, we're gonna have to figure out two different moments of inertia depending on which way we're, we're thinking about this column buckling. So uh, for the moment, we're gonna use, uh, we can calculate, you know, let's, yeah, let's calculate it up here. Um, so for, no, let's do it down here. I'm really indecisive right now. Uh, so for IY, basically the moment of inertia about the Y axis here, um, this is going to be equal to 1 12th uh, times B times A cubed, right? Because when we're looking at this around about the Y axis, this A, if, we're like, if we normally think about this as 1 12th base height cubed, this A kind of becomes our height. So we can plug in the values and we get 0 0.0267 times 10 to the negative 6 meters for... And then we can also find the moment of inertia about the x-axis, which is what we're going to be using for buckling in the xz plane. And uh, we find that to be equal to 0 0.1067 times 10 to the negative 6 meters 4. So now we have everything we need to find the critical, uh, the critical load in buckling in the, each plane, basically in the yz plane and the xz plane. So let's go and plug those in. So we have p crit. Uh, let's consider buckling in the YZ plane first. And again, YZ basically could buckle that way or it could buckle that way. Um, so we just need to sub in that we have pi squared E. And in this case, we're using IY, right? The moment of inertia about the Y axis. And then this is over LE squared. So if we just plug that in, we're going to find that in the YZ plane that P crit is equal to 5.9 kilonewtons. Then when we check for P critical in the XZ plane, we're going to have to basically just redo this expression. So we have P crit in the XZ plane, and uh, that's just going to be equal to pi squared EI. And this is the with the subscript X because we're looking at the moment of inertia about the X axis now. Uh, and this is over LE squared. So we're just gonna find that that is equal to 23.4 kilonewtons. And now what we want to do is we just compare the two different critical loads. So we have for buckling in the YZ plane, the critical load is 5.9 kilonewtons. And for buckling in the XZ plane, uh, our critical load is 23.4 kilonewtons. And intuitively this makes sense. The skinny, basically we're saying that we need a, a smaller load here to make a buckle in the direction that has basically um, a smaller amount of material um, basically around that axis. So if we applied, you know, let's say six kilonewtons, um, then we will have crossed this threshold and we're most likely going to be getting buckling. So 5.9 kilonewtons is the value that we have to take for P critical for the whole column. 
Now, if we want to use that, um, we can we can figure out our allowable load if we set our factor of safety up here as 2.5. So basically, we can just say that the uh, if you remember, the factor of safety is equal to the ultimate load over the allowable load. And if our ultimate load for buckling is 5.9 kilonewtons, then all we have to do for allowable load is that's going to be equal to um, 5.9 kilonewtons over 2.5. I'll write that a little bit cleaner, 2.5. Uh, so our allowable load for buckling with this factor of safety of 2.5 is going to be 2.36 kilonewtons. So that's something to watch out with these problems is typically uh, you're always going to have to check um, for buckling in two directions and then take the smaller value and then if you're talking about factor of safety, like maybe your professor is only asking for you to calculate p crit, but if you're looking for the actual allowable load, then uh, take that factor of safety into consideration. Um, the one other thing that we can check with a column problem is it's possible that the column buckles before it yields or it's also possible that the column yields before it buckles. So if we want to just quickly check that this column won't yield before it buckles and that this is in fact our true allowable uh, load, then what we just need to do is we, uh, if we come back up to the top here, the yield stress was uh, 250 megapascals for this particular material. So if we know that, let's just write this in. So we have yield stress is equal to 250 MPA. Now we know that um, uh, stress is equal to force over area, right? So this is equal to the applied load over the area. Now our cross-sectional area is going to be, um, if we do that up here, we have area is going to be equal to base times height, basically the cross-sectional area. So 20 millimeters times 40 millimeters, that is 800 millimeters squared. So we'll bring that down and we'll be basically just calculating for our yield load here, the load that will cause yielding. So just multiply area to that, uh, to that yield stress and we're going to get this expression here where we have um, that yielding load is going, or the ultimate load basically is going to be equal to uh, 250 MPA times, and you know what, I, I like to write out the units like this, so 250 uh, times 10 to the 6 uh, newtons per meter squared times that area which was 800 millimeters that's also just 800 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared so those meters are going to cancel out and the value that we're going to get is just 200,000 newtons 200,000 newtons which is equal to basically 200 kilonewtons all right, so if we take, this is our yield, uh, this is our ultimate load. Uh, if we just check again using the same thing, factor of safety is equal to allowable over ultimate, then that means that our allowable load for yielding is going to be equal to just uh, 200 kilonewtons divided by 2.5, and that is going to give us a value of 80 kilonewtons. Um, so we're definitely going to buckle before that. If we apply 5.9 kilonewtons, then we're most likely going to buckle. And uh, that's uh, you know that's important to look at because if you look at this column, it is quite long, right? It is three meters long, and it's very slender. So it's a very slender column, and very slender columns are very prone to buckling. So in this case, it will definitely um, it will buckle in the y z plane before it buckles in the XZ plane and before it yields.